Here in the hallway there are the stairs to the upper floor and the doors to the living room and the kitchen. Let's go into the living room first. It has the typical layout with windows in the corner. Another window is here. It was walled up when we bought the house. Interestingly, different layers of paint came out here. The room was painted nine or ten times with different colors. Amazing, because the house is only 200 years old. Here is the tiled wood stove that we built in. The original wood stove used to be a little further over here. It was probably not a tiled stove, but an iron stove. The heat was then conducted from here through this opening into the bedrooms above. A simple hole in the ceiling. The ceiling itself is conserved as it used to look with the boards placed loosely on these strips. On top of the boards was originally just earth as insulation. Of course it trickled out, so we had to remove it. You can also see that the beams are relatively dark here. That is because there was an open light about here. Because here this room wasn't just the living room, it was the workshop of the shoemaker who lived here. He had to have a lot of light here, of course. There once was no passage to the kitchen here. And this little niche has also been reconstructed. We found it in the wall area that we had to take away so that we could create this passage to the kitchen. If you look at the ceiling in the kitchen, you can see this area without boards. In this place there was a smoke hood. Below it was the open hearth, the smoke from which would rise just to the ceiling. The smoke went through the planked and mud plastered vertical shaft to the attic. This is called a black kitchen. Black because the smoke naturally leaves its mark as you can see here. The ceiling boards are still black on the top too. We've just flipped them over to make the kitchen less dark. Here at this point we have also left the blackening of the kitchen visible. That was indeed the original surface. All these areas above the brick hearth were sooty like this brick. I have to add, of course, that this brick chimney was not installed here until the late 19th century as a modernization. Here we go back through a door into the corridor. It used to be the only access to the kitchen. Here the view to the front door, on the left the niche for the tiled stove. If you look in the other direction, you can see that the original house ended here. There was a wall under this beam, the outer wall of the old house. Later, however, an extension was built which we now go into. This extension originally only served as a passage because the new entrance door was installed over there. That way the front door facing the street could be walled up. When I bought the house there was no door in the front. But we had to build a bathroom somewhere because there wasn't one in the whole house. That's why we moved the front door back to its old location so that we gained space for a bathroom. We reused here these old bricks that we found while digging out the foundations. These rounded bricks here are something really special. Around 1801 the old fortress in Ulm was demolished as a result of the Napoleonic Wars. In this old fortress there were cornices like this one with rounded stones. And the stones were then reused to build houses by the farmers who had to demolish the fortress. We found these stones mixed into the normal bricks of the walls. But we have 
rebuilt all that we found as a cornice again to indicate what they were once used for. Here is a small piece of the old fortification of Ulm, so to speak. It's a bit confusing here with so many doors. Another door leads to a higher part of the extension and because it's higher three steps were necessary. Before our renovation there was no door and you could enter the back part of the house only from the garden. While the front part of the house is at ground level and does not have a basement, there is a small cellar at the back. It was built in 1949 and was probably dug out by hand. The walls are made of concrete. The ceiling is constructed very simply. These are steel girders that were set into the concrete. The ceiling is only 12 cm thick. Now let's go to this room here above the cellar. We called it the house economics room because the laundry was done here. But the room was originally just a storage room for firewood. This door to the garden was the only access back then. Above this room is a large attic with at the time was a bit difficult to access. There was only a hatch, no stairs. We then put a decent staircase in here. We had to intercept the ceiling beams, then there was space for a sufficiently wide staircase. A room was created here that was larger and more usable than many other rooms in the house. We have very low ceilings there, but everything here is quite high. With the new skylights it's also nice and bright. So it has actually become one of the most beautiful rooms in the house. It used to be an attic where all kinds of junk were stored. What is remarkable about this roof structure is its simplicity. The pearl in here had to be secured against the shear of the rafters to the outside. That's what these iron bars are for. They connect the purlin with the floor joists. We had a bit of a problem over there because an iron bar was missing and the whole roof structure was pushed outwards. We had to build in a special construction to pull it back inside. Here is the view of the old part of the house. You can see the former eaves here and the half-timbered wall of the upper floor. There are two very old-fashioned windows in it. These tiny windows were the same all around the house, but later almost all of them were enlarged. We found these two windows here in their original state because it was no longer necessary to enlarge them after building the extension of the house. So here two windows from the early 19th century have been preserved. For the children the passage between their bedroom and the attic was particularly fun. We will look at that from the other side later. We then connected this room with the attic of the main house with a staircase, so let's go up there now. Here you can see that the construction is a bit older. We have old beams from 200 years ago. Above that was the equally old roof structure. But it was so badly damaged by worms and the timbers were so thin that it was not worth repairing. Therefore the roof structure had been renewed here by us. Of course this was done true to the original as far as possible with one exception. You can see here that we have placed small spaces under the collar beams. Originally the collar beams were of course at this height here, but that was simply too low. You can see that it is just high enough now. That the beam was over here, then you can see that that wasn't enough. We then installed the stormer here and two skylights which let light in. The pretty little window here is an original window again. When we ordered the new windows, people laughed at us because it was hard to imagine that such a small window would make any sense at all. 
This wall is the end of the house to the west. There are no windows here because another house had been attached to it. Originally the whole thing was a semi-detached house. That means the half-timbered house continued in the same style to the west. This part of the house was demolished around 1900. Unfortunately, this half-timbered wall was not properly secured during this demolition. It slipped down. You can see this here, where the tenon has almost been pulled out of the beam. There was a total settlement of about 15 centimeters, and that warped the house a lot. You can see that very clearly below. Here we climb up a bit and look over the collar beams. You can see carpentry marks that we have transferred from the old rafters to the new ones. Here's the number 11, then logically the 10 has to come here and the original 9 back there. That means that there were 8 more rafters in this direction behind this wall in the neighboring house. In such a house it is of course always difficult to put up cupboards. Here we have simply created a closet under the purlin. There are a few other ways to put up a wardrobe here. Here we go down the stairs to the first floor. The original staircase here was much steeper. You can still see the place of the top step somewhere here. You could close the stairs with a trapdoor. The trapdoor could be locked here if you wanted to keep it open. Yeah. This is the first floor now. A lot of timber frame with wattel and knob is still beautifully preserved here. All of these walls have been preserved in their original state. We were able to examine the wall structure at some points, for example here when making this opening for ventilation. During the renovation we left uh, open some small windows into the past to show the original painting. Overall, it was not well preserved. We now go into the front room, the room that is above the living room. The opening for the warm air from below was somewhere here. And again a small window to the past. This half-timbered structure continues, of course, in the outer walls. However, these walls were so rotten that we had to re replace them almost entirely. The timbers there are about 80% new. Above all, the windows were extremely enlarged around 1930. These windows cut below the old sill plate so that the whole timber frame was badly damaged. We put the windows back where they belong, but they are a bit bigger than the original windows. You do need a little bit more light. And we have doubled the walls here. That is, the wall thickness here is now around 15 cm of timber framing plus another 15 cm of masonry. There are two reasons for this. It improves the stability and keeps the noise out because the street is right outside here and the mass of the bricks is ideal to dampen the noise. The ceiling in this room was originally a little different. The construction here with these simple boards is made identically as downstairs. But in the 19th century the ceiling here was open and you could see the upper floorboards. The ceiling was just whitewashed. It was a very simple house. Here you can see uh, some special marks by which you can tell that all this wood was rafted down here on the illo. The rafts were held together with these wooden nails. The crossbeams lay in the notches. So they rafted 100 kilometers from the Alps to Ulm and then simply took the raft apart. This timber frame here is typical of the early 19th century. It consists of a top plate above and a ground plate below, and each field is framed by two posts. In the middle there is a sill plate 
and a strut at an angle. This is actually how every half timbered wall here is structured. The joints are mortised and secured with wooden dowels. In many places you can find the marks of the carpenters. Outside in the corridor you can take another nice look at the timber frame and search for these carpenter marks. Though this one, which just looks like a scratch, is actually a number one. Because the timbers here in this half-timbered field were assigned to the post number one here in the outer wall. This post is then of course post number two. It must have its number two here somewhere. Yes, right there. That is why everything that follows is marked with a 2 in the next field, like this diagonal strut. And the next one is this post, it has three notches here. Then of course everything that follows is labeled with number 3. Always the following half timbered field was numbered accordingly. On the other side they counted differently post here again of course, but the doorpost was now number 2. It should have its markings down here. The other post was number 3. And this one is now number 4. Exactly 1, 2, 3 invisible, 4. Then the 4 again and so on. Now there should be number 5 and there it is. And now we are of course already at the entrance to the smallest room here. The room was originally even smaller, because here on the right was the smoke hood from the kitchen. The recess for the smoke hood has even been preserved here. Here the beam has been taken back a bit. The smoke hood stretched from here to there on the right. As I said, the chimney was installed later. I also made a video here about the spunk bed. And here is the special construction that I made so that our youngest boy could get up here quite easily. And of course, this is the old window to the attic of the new part of the house. It was very practical that the children could climb through it using these stairs here. The children liked it very much because it gave them access to their large playroom. Here again a very simple wooden door with a reused old lock. Outside again in the corridor you can clearly see how the house was warped when the neighboring house on the right was demolished and this half timbered wall slid down. You can see this from the incline of this longitudinal beam. It has to be said that timber frame can withstand a lot of deformation. As long as the beam here doesn't break, everything is still statically okay. Only the danger of banging your head has of course increased here on the stairs. Here we are back down in the corridor. Perhaps I should tell also a little bit about the ground here. The house stood in the dirt without a basement or foundation. Our work on installing foundations under all the walls was very complex. We dug deep here and ended up pouring a thick concrete slab under the house. Then there came insulation, pipes for the underfloor heating and than tiles and parquet. This means that the house is always nicely heated from below and in combination with the tiled stove is very cozy. We loved living here. <laughs> 